So this is my cautionary tale to PC owners. And I cannot stress the importance of this. I think that everybody who has a computer should make sure that they're monitoring what their CPU temperature is at, at all times. It turns out that my system was having serious overheating issues and I didn't even really know about it until I started having issues with the computer turning itself off due to overheating issues. Yeah. It would reach a point where it just couldn't handle it anymore and just quits. So after a little bit of diagnosis and Googling, I realized, Hey, idiot. Maybe check what the temperature is doing. Maybe it's overheating. So sure enough, that was the culprit. And I just want to warn everybody else out there so nobody runs the risk of ruining their hardware as well. I actually got away with it just fine. I am recording this on the very same computer that was having the issues. I installed a new CPU cooler and all is well. It's my conclusion that you can just sort of end up with a bad CPU cooler. Maybe something that didn't quite pass the quality check at the factory or whatever. Or just a cheap and poorly built unit. So the last time I upgraded, I was going to build my own PC this time around, but I opted for one of those services where you could pick out the parts that you wanted and they would be assembled for you and the company would just ship you the finished computer. And the company that I went through is iBuyPower. So I was picking out the parts I wanted. I was like, oh, I want this RAM and I want this graphics card and this CPU and everything. And oh, uh, Cooling. Well, by default, it said it came with a liquid CPU cooler. That sounded way more futuristic and fancy than my old computer that just had a fan blowing out, right? So naturally, I was just like, liquid cooled sounds awesome. Let's do it. The problem is, is that I think I just ended up with a very cheap and generic CPU cooler. I don't think that you can even get this from any other site besides iBuyPower. We got this unit here. It looks really cool. This part here lights up with LEDs and it looks awesome through the side of the case and all that. But I just think that it's not that amazing or functional of a unit. So while I was searching for my problem, I had come across another person who made a video and they had opened up their CPU cooler and they took a peek inside and it was kind of scary in there. And whatever kind of fluid it is that they use for the coolant, it had somehow solidified and got chunky and gummed up the fluid lines or whatever you call them and essentially made it so the pump was not working anymore. The person in this video also just so happened to have an I buy power unit like the one that I have right here. So I was just gonna have a little bit of fun here and capture the process on video for my channel and I was going to open up my CPU cooler that I had gotten from I buy power that it appears to just be like their generic own brand and I'm assuming that they just really are nothing special to look at but so I'm gonna stick my camera on the tripod and we're gonna have a look inside. So you're probably going to realize now is that I've not cleaned up my desk or workshop space for this video very well and if that's a concern for you then whatever. So this is the part that we want to work on right here. If you flip it over you'll see that it has a bunch of thermal paste which you probably don't want to get on your fingers. It's kind of hard to clean off but I'm probably going to make a huge mess with it anyway. And these are also the world's smallest little allen wrench screws so you gotta have a pretty small one this one actually came from my um guitar repair tool kit it's a super small size allen wrench we're just going to remove all of these screws and this is going to take a minute so i kind of wish that i had a drill bit of this or a screwdriver bit whatever some of these screws are a little bit painful to get out just because it's such a small thing that you have to stick the wrench into so I'm quickly finding that I'm not as cool as the other DIY channels where they just unscrew stuff all quick and you get the fast forward. I am only half as cool and I am failing to use this tiny wrench a lot. It's already leaking some stuff onto my desk, which is fine. So we did not run a very clean ship here anyway. Okay, so this is now all of the screws removed. Grab some paper towels and maybe prevent this from making as big of a mess when I pop that plate off there. Now we just have to pry this off somehow. 
Just lifts right out of there really easy. And to me, this actually looks pretty good inside of there, so I'm not really sure what the issue was. See, this was some better lighting. You can kind of see down in there, you can kind of see there's nothing really that seems like it's making an, obstruct an obstruction on the cap part of it. You can kind of see how in the middle channel here there might be something that looks a little bit sort of solid and chunky. Let's see if we can scrape a little bit of that out. I see just like that it's kind of becoming like a solid sort of paste so you can see it right there that's actually like a solid chunky substance that I gotta dig out of there. So as I mentioned before, I saw the other video and this other guy's was just completely clogged with that same kind of sludge all up inside of the CPU cooler. And I would be willing to bet that if we took this other part over here with the actual with the actual radiator fins and if we took this apart then we might find some more obstruction inside of there or somewhere inside the lines because to me this pump was not functioning properly it was not circulating the liquid properly so it's a few days later now and i decided that this was not a satisfactory place to stop i noticed a few more things that i would be able to unscrew and have a closer look at the inside of this thing we have these four screws here which can be removed so i'm just going to take a look inside of here we have the torx wrench we were fortunate enough to get a standard size this time. And these unscrew super easily. And I should remind you, I don't know much about these CPU coolers, so I'm just kind of experimenting and exploring and guessing my way through this. I don't intend for it to work when I'm done. I just want to see what's going on inside of it. Inside of here we have some sort of a circuit board which does some sort of circuit board magic, I'm certain. And I doubt that my camera is going to pick it up good, but there does seem to be some sort of damage here around a few of these pins. They look like they probably got a little bit hot and melted because this thing did overheat several times. But regardless, we have four more screws that we can get to here. So let's take those off and go a little bit deeper. Right, all those screws are removed and now we can see if we can take this little plate off of here oh there it is that's something okay so I think that I was wrong before in my assessment the the part over here with the RGB lights and all the cool stuff I was wrong in my assessment that this was the pump housing I think this is must be the pump right here any CPU cooler experts definitely feel free to school me on this one. I may be making some very false claims in this video. As I said, this is for entertainment purposes only, but you can definitely see inside of here there's lots of uh, liquid that could easily spill out were I to be so careless. And there does not seem to be any particularly large amount of sludge buildup or anything like that. It's a little bit gross inside there, but I wouldn't say that there's any sludge or slime so just for the sake of not making a mess let's just try to cap this back up and it has a little rubber o-ring and we're leaking a little bit of stuff but that's okay put a few screws back into it so the circuit board on top here must be the electronics that control the pump and all of that good stuff we are leaking a little bit of the sauce onto my desk Again, somebody could let me know in the comments what exactly this fluid is or made of. I know I could just Google it myself, but you know. I cannot readily find a way to remove these lines. I'm sure that there is a way, just through brute forcing it alone. I feel like I might have to use a lot more brute force. <laughs> I do notice there is this little rubber plug right here. So let's try to uh, and pop that loose and we have another screw underneath. So it looks like that will also be one of our Torx bit sizes. So we'll just give it a try. Too big. Okay, so there it is. I found the right wrench to loosen the screw. So now we'll actually get to see what it does for real. 
it's pretty much exactly what I expected, just a little tiny port that goes down the side there. You can see that's openly exposed to the fluid too. It could drain out if it wanted to. It is also not obstructed. Again, we'll put the screw back in just to avoid making more of a mess inside my little workshop area here. I'm just gonna see if we can get behind this line with something and just pry it loose maybe. That might be the ticket. This is a little bit flimsy, this nail file thing, I guess, is the closest thing on hand that I could find to use as a prying instrument. And this is not going to budge, so... So these lines here are connected on there very good. I can't seem to get those loose. I would imagine if you could remove this housing from the outside, maybe you'd be able to access those on the inside, but I don't think I have the right tool to do that with. So on this end of the unit, the same lines have sort of a swivel mount. So I figured that might be another place you could easily access that and just assemble it or just pull it loose. Again, I'm exerting quite a bit of pressure here and these do not seem to want to come off easily. Still have not cleaned off the thermal paste. Not super difficult. So there's an obvious seam here in the plastic, and I don't think it was meant to be taken apart, but I think that we're going to try to take it apart anyway. There's no special method to this, I'm just trying to force it open. I need something better. And I tend to go a little bit MacGyver when it's time to improvise a tool that you don't have, so we're going to try some different prying instruments. It may be able to break this seal and lift this cap off. Actually, this drill bit might be exactly what we needed. I felt something break loose. This is, of course, the authorized repair procedures. They would teach you this at the factory if you worked for iBuy Power. There it is. Okay, I got the whole thing to lift off of there. So apparently the liquid that we were seeing earlier, this is the other side of it. So it just goes right through there, just enough so it can make contact with this plate, which makes contact with the hot surface of the CPU. So it's a very simple system in here. It's actually very much so like the cooling system inside of a vehicle. So this entire housing with the USB assembly inside of it seems to come apart fairly easily. So we're just gonna give this a little bit of a heave ho. There it is. All right, so the top plate. Now we have ourselves a sweet I buy power badge that we can use on any number of cool things we own. So this is just gonna be the circuits that make the LEDs go. Now this might be something cool that I could save and repurpose for a different project if I wanted to have this sort of LED circuit. It's got some good RGB LEDs inside of there and some program inside of the computer makes it change colors and whatnot. Would have been a lot nicer if they would have focused more on making it a good CPU cooler instead of making it look nice, but I can appreciate the aesthetics of it too. And there you see, it's just a nice little pre-done circuit board with a bunch of LEDs exactly as we had expected. So now back to this part, there are a few more little Phillips screws where the fluid line's attached to. So that might be the ticket to getting those to come loose. We're just gonna pop those screws off real quick. Hopefully, these take a little bit of effort with the small screwdriver. My small screwdriver is probably just a little bit too big, which is also causing me complications here. And does it come loose? It does, cool. We'll have a look inside of there. It actually looks pretty clean. I don't think that we really had that extreme of a problem with the clogging and the sludge and whatnot. Let's just take this other one loose. Screws are kind of stubborn. Either stubborn or I just don't have the right tool. They put a good long screw in here too, just, you know, because it's extra difficult. They want to make sure it's super secure. So I'll pull that one out of there too. Now we can have a look inside of here. This all looks pretty clear and good inside of there. A zoom lens is definitely on my Christmas list. My final assessment is that maybe the clogging issue that I originally thought was not so much of a problem, but the temperature gauge does not lie, and there was definitely something wrong with the CPU cooler. So it is now going to be decommissioned. Banished to the shadow realm, as you will. So yeah, I kind of expected it to be a little bit worse inside of there, but that was just my little bogus fun experiment. Maybe this was enlightening or useful to someone. The moral of the story is make sure that your computer isn't overheating because an overheating computer is like totally bad news bears. 
Anyway, thank you everybody for watching. I hope you stick around and watch more of my stuff. I'm a musician and I make songs and stuff like that too. Follow me for more recipes. And have fun out there. I would like to give a Patreon supporter shout out to John Johnson and our newest member, AJ Barbour. You could become a Patreon supporter too. Absolutely no pressure on that, but I greatly appreciate anybody who is willing to make a financial contribution to my lame little channel over here.